This is a Sparkle A310 Eco, a low-profile, single-slot GPU that's powered by the PCI Express hole. In the box, you get a GPU and a free short bracket, and that's it. On the card, we have a shouty little fan, two display ports, and HDMI 2.0B. You want to install that low-profile bracket? Grab some paper towels and some thermal paste. Remove this screw, this screw, and this wee baby screw on the back. However, that second screw, well, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah. You see this cover? It doesn't come off. That means we need to remove the heatsink, and in doing so, void the warranty sticker. Now, maybe I'm having a senior moment here, and someone in the comments will tell me I'm an idiot, and on a completely unrelated note, that there is a simple way to remove the screw. Now, I didn't see anything in the extensive documentation, so until then, let's go ahead and de-screw the back and pop off the lid. Now we can get to that critter. Now, time to clean up the heat lotion, add some fresh processor lube, and let's get that bracket installed. All right, everything looks good. Time for a quick wipe down with a bit of IPA to destroy the paint job. And there we go. Now let's cram it in a thermal note box and poke it with a Linux stick. Like AMD, Intel's binary drivers are a hot mess, but they have the added benefit of only being compatible with one Linux distribution. And that last update for these drivers, that was all the way back in 2023. And you should set your expectations accordingly. And no, Arc Control is Windows only because reasons. Fortunately, using the open source drivers is an absolute breeze. All you need is a recent kernel and Mesa version. The closest thing to a monitoring option that I was able to find for the Intel Arc is this two script setup called Intel Arc Monitor. Now, one of the scripts, it just gives you basic information, while this other script, it offers a more comprehensive view. Unfortunately, neither of them include fan control. The lack of fan control for Arc GPUs under Linux is a significant drawback for this card because not only is it a blower-style cooler, it's an itsy-bitsy blower-style cooler. And that means it's really shouty! At idle, we have an off-on cycle that will render you clinically insane after 20 minutes. This never stops. It is unending. There is no escape. And this is what it sounds like when rendering a video or playing a game, basically anything outside of web browsing. Lovely. AV1 encoding worked pretty much out of the box using the Handbrake Nightly Flatpak. Finally found to use for Flatpak. Very happy about that. Encoding a five minute clip using AV1 SVT, which is using the CPU, in this case at 5600G, took a little over 16 minutes. Encoding that same clip on the A310 took a little over three. The A310 worked out of the box with OBS using the VAPI AV1 encoder. And more importantly, it worked as an AV1 add-in card on one of my NVIDIA systems. And let's take a look at some sample footage captured using VAPI 264, VAPI AV1, and just CPU X264 at 1080p with a 6000 bit rate. This is not a quality comparison, but rather like just a demonstration of functionality across the different encoders. And hey, it works. Out of all the applications I thought would just work out of the box, Blender was going to be the one. And I ended up trying three different versions of Blender and surprisingly, it was not having any of it. Even after installing one API and the Intel compute stack, nothing. Welcome to the I would have lost that bet segment of this video. The A310 fired right up in DaVinci Resolve and the GPU processing was available using OpenCL. I was really excited, really excited by this, right up until I tried to exit the cut page, which caused DaVinci Resolve to lock right the hell up. Maybe one day. Yes, yes, I know the A310 isn't designed for gaming, but I wanted to see how it stacked up against the integrated graphics in my 5600G. These benchmarks are less about raw performance and more about basic functionality. Starting out with superposition at 720p low, the A310 delivers 78.3 FPS average. Now in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 720p low, the A310 manages a solid 53. And finally in Cybertruck at 720p low, the A310 manages 31.4 frames per second. 
So what do we think of Sparkle's A310 Eco? You know what? It technically functions as an AV1 encoder under Linux, so it has that going for it. And if you're running kernel 6.6 plus in a recent version of Mesa, it's going to work as well as Intel Arc works under Linux. No one's going to run out and buy this for the integrated graphics level gaming performance, and even if they did, earplugs would definitely be a requirement for desktop use. That said, people will absolutely buy it to add AV1 to their home media servers located in their basement, covered in pillows, to block out the sound. And as you might imagine, that's a small market. With the inevitable rollout of AV1 on Twitch and YouTube, there's going to be a lot of people looking to add AV1 encoding to their existing streaming setup on the cheap. Sparkle, hear me, you got half a product. Take this card as a base, chop off the video bits, find a way to passively cool it, slap on a $75 price tag, and you know what? When AV1 rolls out, good luck keeping them in stock. Also, get in touch. I want some of your other cards to play with. Now, to keep things short, I glossed over my setup in this video, but you can find the full write-up on interfacinglinux.com. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. And if you get a chance, give me a subscribe and some thumbs so that glue stick munching YouTube algorithm will consider recommending this channel. But most importantly, get out there and make something awesome.